Hey guys, Jay McGann, and I'm here to go over chapter four of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And this chapter is the Keeper of the Keys, I believe. Maybe I can find it. Yes, the Keeper of the Keys. And this is where Hagrid shows up to the little hut on the little island that Vernon had tried to hide everybody at so that the letters couldn't get to Harry. And Hagrid gets in, of course, upsets the Dursley family, tells Harry about his parents and their past. And then it's unclear if they actually leave the hut together or if they're staying the night there because oh could you imagine being that horrified as the Dursleys in the next room and they decided to spend the night. But I, I like the amount of information that is poured out of this chapter more than anything else I think. I have got notes aplenty and my book doesn't want to stay up. Man I knew I should have got the hardcover books. So to go over my notes here, and as always, you guys are welcome to add in your comments down below, but please don't give me spoilers for chapters ahead because I want to get there naturally. And a lot of my notes are still just little details that I think might be important to write down or that I found to be interesting. Uh, as we progress, I'm sure I'm going to have more commentary theory type of things to write down, but we'll, we'll see how it goes because honestly, I don't know what fully to expect. Uh, but Hagrid has a knock like a cannon and Uncle Vernon Vernon comes out with a rifle, which is this mysterious package he had gotten in the last chapter that the boys didn't know what was in there. Yes, he thought a gun would save him from the magical folk. And Hagrid's eyes are described as, quote, eyes glinting like black beetles for whatever weird way to describe a person that is. I've never, I've never really thought of a beetle as glinty, more like squishable, but I, I don't know. I don't really see them as like shiny type of things. Ugh. And Hagrid had a lot of things in his pocket, but in particular a cake, and it seems so bizarre for him to have a chocolate cake with green icing in his pocket, which green seems to be a strange color. Uh, they reference it as Dumbledore writing things out in green, or at least whoever is sending their letters writes things out in green, and then there's also the green flash that Harry sees when he thinks about his past when he was one and Voldemort showed up. And yes, we say his name here because I will not give him power through my fear, thank you. But the fact that Hagrid had a cake in his pocket, I'm wondering if that's maybe some British slang for something. I don't know if that's some kind of like sweet treat or a Twinkie or something that I would not recognize because when I think of a cake I think of either one of those circular cakes or a sheet cake where, you know, they'll put Spongebob or something on top. So if that is British slang, someone please Tell me. Uh, da, 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 da. And Hagrid finally introduces himself as Rubius Hagrid, Keeper of the Keys and Grounds at Hogwarts. And I know the movie mentions his first name, but I had forgotten it completely. Like, I had <laughs> no clue. It did not ring any bells when they said Rubius Hagrid. And the Dursleys are absolutely terrified of Hagrid, and he's definitely playing into that. He's getting furious and making them back down. He's threatening them. He's doing all sorts of things that you would not want to see a wizard or anybody do to other people. And most of why Hagrid is furious is that Harry knows nothing about his entire past history, the wizarding world, anything. But I'm really curious as to whether or not the Dursleys really knew that much to begin with. I mean, they knew Hogwarts existed. They knew that her sister Lily had gone there. They knew that she was married to a dude and they lived off in, I guess, the wizarding villages? Or how does that work? Is, is it a whole separate world? Is it on top? I, I, I We'll get there when we get there, I guess, and we'll find out together. <laughs> like I'm not the only one who hasn't read this series, I know. But even though Dumbledore left a letter with baby Harry, I mean, it's one letter, even if it was, you know, one page or five pages long front and back, there's only so much information in there. And would they even understand it or process it anyways? So I, I don't know. I think Hagrid's kind of upset with the wrong person there because even though Hagrid saw Dumbledore leave a letter. Like I said, he has no idea what was in there. So how can he be mad at the Dursleys for not saying something or other things that they might not know or understand? And did that letter ever express that they were going to come back to collect Harry when he was about 11 years old? Because I, that seems like a whole different set of situations that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like there's there's some plot hole issues in there. Ah, and the letter that Hagrid was carrying was addressed to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. 
So we don't even know what C anymore. It's, it's, that has to be for the ludicrousy of the whole thing, but you would think with how specific the other letters were addressed that, you know, we'd get a little bit more like, oh, such and such address at such and such C. I know it's supposed to be fun, but paint a better picture for me. Oh, and Dumbledore's titles, as they were written in the letter, go Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederation of Wizards. What is a Mugwump? I, I, I don't even know. Like all the other titles, like, okay, I get what these mean. Then there's Mugwump, like, huh? At least the author didn't put down Grand Wizard. And we finally get the first time of using the word muggle, which is a non-magic using person. Oh, and then when Petunia is talking about her sister Lily and how Lily went to Hogwarts and she'd come home and, you know, do this and that, and she saw Lily to be a freak. And it, it really kind of sounds like Petunia was tormented by Lily and not just by the magic, but because it was probably a little bit of a narcissistic parent situation where you have the scapegoat and the golden child and Lily was obviously the golden child. She had the magic. She went to the special magical school. She had the supernatural life. And then here's Petunia that is not even second fiddle. She's like 45th fiddle. And she doesn't feel important or really cared about as much by her parents. And I could see where that would also create a problem and a rift. Even if Lily didn't mean it or Lily wasn't actively trying to torment Petunia, that's what happens in those kind of family situations. And with how Petunia is, I could, I could see it. I could see it being the case with her parents. And they mentioned that Voldemort wouldn't dare touch Hogwarts because he's afraid of Dumbledore for still whatever for that would mean or why. I guess all those titles would frighten anybody away. <laughs> you know, you come to have a wizard duel and he has to go through 45 minutes of titles. Maybe it's not worth it. Who knows? Um, but yeah, the question comes up as to why didn't Voldemort recruit the Potters to his army? And nobody really knows the answer as to why he didn't try or put any kind of spell over them or why he was even at their house the night he killed them. And Hagrid says that Harry's lightning bolt scar is because it was part of the evilest curse ever that Harry could have been involved in and so that left a mark and you know the curse was so evil that it obliterated everything even Harry's house from when he was a baby. Oh and this wasn't particularly important but I wrote these names down because who knows maybe they are later I've never heard them before. Uh, Voldemort killed the McKibbins, the Bones, and the Pruitts? 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 I don't speak the English and I has the dyslexia. And Hagrid was really going on about Voldemort saying people think he died that night, but I don't think that's right. And people think he went into hiding, but I don't think that makes sense either. And Hagrid doesn't have an answer, but he's definitely like, he doesn't believe anything. Like, he doesn't know what happens and that's kind of good enough for him. So at one point Hagrid even says, quote, don't know if he had enough human left in him to die, which is interesting having seen the movies and knowing how that works out. And there's also mention that Voldemort had a bunch of people in trances and those trances ended and they were released from that curse whatever when Voldemort vanished. And then Vernon makes the mistake of insulting Dumbledore, but what I don't understand is instead of attacking Vernon directly like Hagrid had already threatened, he attacks Dudley and tries to turn him into a pig, but instead just gives him the curly pigtail. Like, okay, I know Dudley's not great, not fully defending, you know, Dudley being a great cousin here, but he didn't seem to speak up at all to Hagrid. So why would Hagrid lash out and punish him as a kid? Like that doesn't make any sense. That makes Hagrid look really bad in my opinion. And then Hagrid mentions that he's not allowed to use magic because he was expelled from Hogwarts. And I, I really hope the way that Hagrid speaks gets better as the book goes on because it was making me crazy trying to understand these lines. I already have dyslexia. I don't need my brain to explode. Let me try one of these. I'd not say no to some it stronger if you've got it mind. What is that? English, please? I'd not say no to some it stronger if you've got it mind. Like everything he said just about was so hard to read. I'm like 10 times reading the same sentence. Hagrid, please think before you say each word. But I guess that is the end of my chapter four review. The next chapter says Diagon Alley, so I'm kind of excited to see that. But this chapter was uh, definitely a lot more informative than I expected, and I'm excited to keep moving forward. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, leave me a comment or whatever. Let me know how you like chapter four, and we'll see you next time, family members. Well, family members, 
members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self. And I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. People. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members.